Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed upon the ground, and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should sprout and grow, he knows not how. The earth produces of itself first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. And he said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable shall we use for it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the most important things in life, although not the most important thing, is we need to know our identity. We need to know where we came from and where we're going. Sometimes if someone is completely lost in life, if they don't know where their life story is going, if they're in all kinds of trouble and they feel they've totally wandered into a wilderness of all kinds of trouble, they can have a great fear about their life. I heard a psychologist once say that when people don't know where they came from or where they're going, it causes all kinds of anxiety and depression. Well, we have to come to this understanding of our identity. And we want an identity that can stay with us all the time. You know, there are so many things in life that change. We move from place to place. Um, I myself just went through a pretty significant transition as I was sent to another parish assignment and uh, it's a bit challenging for me to do that because you get uprooted from a familiar surrounding and you sort of move away from your friends and you go into a new place where you don't really know anybody and it's quite a challenge for priests to move from here to there and all over the place. But the most important thing that we need to understand about our identity is our relationship to Christ. Jesus, in the parables, he's speaking to us about the kingdom of heaven. And we have to see that our identity has to do with the kingdom of God, that we are citizens of God's kingdom. You know, this world will pass away, and our time in this world will pass away, but our relationship to God has to be eternal. And our identity must come from that. When you have that identity secure in your heart, then no matter where you go, or whatever you experience, whether you're sick or healthy, or old or young, or in this country or that country or whatever, you'll have a sense of a foundation, a sense of security, a sense of mission and purpose in your life. Well, Jesus is speaking to us about this identity when he talks about the kingdom of God. And this is the deepest identity we need. Not our location, not our community, but our relationship to the Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This relationship is what is most important our relationship to God. Now, Jesus, in his preaching, he speaks again and again and again about the kingdom of God. He uses all kinds of parables to convey a message to us. And when he teaches, if he's teaching us something, it means we need to know it. It means we can so easily forget it or not value what's most important. So he teaches us about the kingdom of God. He wants us to understand it and to live as members of this kingdom. In his teaching, Jesus is teaching us about our deepest identity as citizens of heaven. I have a friend in the priesthood, and he'll say, you ask him, Father, where are you from? And he'll say right away, Oh, I'm from heaven, and I'm trying to get back there. And that's the spirit we need to have. We have to see, really, that our anchor, our foundation, is in the kingdom of God. Jesus compares the kingdom of God to a seed tiny, tiny seed, which is kind of interesting. You would think if the kingdom of God is so majestic and profound and awesome, he would have compared the kingdom of God to a galaxy. He would have said the kingdom of God is like the sun in the sky or the stars or the universe or some galaxy or something that is so awesome and profound and mysterious. Yet he doesn't do that. He takes the kingdom of God, which is the most majestic reality this, because it's the life of the Trinity, and he compares it to something so tiny a little seed. There are so many lessons that we can get from this comparison. One of them is this. A seed has within it the power of life. 
You know, if you think about it, if there were no seeds, there'd be no food for animals or for humanity. There'd be no life. Everything would be death. A tiny little seed has that power of life. I remember years ago I was visiting a good friend of mine, Father Benedict Rochelle, and he had this big tree out in front of the retreat center. And it had these seeds that would fall down like a helicopter blade, and it landed on my vehicle. And then I drove for hours later to somewhere else, and that seed stayed on the vehicle the whole time. And I planted it, and the tree is now about, I don't know, 15 feet tall or so. That tiny little seed has brought forth this huge tree, and you can see all these birds going into it, and it provides shade. But that's what a seed has. It has this power of life within it. So from this we learn that if we want the fullness of life, if we want to make sure we're living our life well and to the full, we have to follow Christ. We have to live for His kingdom. If we don't, we're missing out on life. You know, I think one of the things that people question about themselves is, am I living life well? Am I living my life to the full? And they get tremendously frustrated if someone gets in the way of that, someone or something. You know, they can have some difficult situation they have to face, or some person may challenge them, and they'll feel that, oh no, this person, this situation is preventing me from living my life to the full. Well, Christ is giving us the answer about how to live life to the full. Live by the kingdom of God. Live in His grace and by His truth. If we want to live life to the full, if we want to stay in touch with life, if we want a situation where our life is always getting better, no matter what hardship we're facing or challenge, we have to enter into Christ. Really, this is not just some saying, it's, it's a way of life. Enter into Christ. That's a good lesson for us when you're having some difficulty enter into Christ. Turn to Him in prayer. Acknowledge your sins. Turn away from sin. Go to Mass. Pray. Trust in Him. Then you'll be in touch with life itself. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Another thing we can learn from this parable about the seed being like the Kingdom of God is that a seed appears to be insignificant. You know, people don't really notice how important seeds are. Uh, we know that they give life to so many things, they have that power of life within them. Um, but it seems so insignificant. Well, that's like the Kingdom of God. In this world, the Kingdom of Christ seems insignificant. How many people today don't even care about their own relationship to the Most Holy Trinity, who go through the world walking on the seeds of God's Kingdom and not even knowing they're doing that, who ignore that power of life, that power of grace, that is there in Christ, and think they are living life to the full in all other ways. The Kingdom of God appears very insignificant in this world. Yesterday I baptized three little babies, and it's amazing, the ceremony, of, the sacrament of baptism, the celebration, the actual ritual, is quite small. Just a little bit of water and some words, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Well, that small sacrament is filled with the power. It's like that tiny little seed was put in their heart. That seed of God's Kingdom. And there's power there. The power of grace. The Eucharist, which is the real presence of Jesus, is small. When you go to adoration, when you go to Mass, you see a little host that is worshipped. And it seems so insignificant how many people walk by our tabernacles without even acknowledging that Christ is there. How many people walk by our church and don't even think about the fact that Jesus is there. Well, that tiny reality of the Eucharist is filled with power. It's the power of the real presence of Jesus. And confession is another example. When you go to confession, which is something that Catholics today should do regularly. Today Catholics should go to confession regularly. Once a month or once a week, but really whenever you need to. And you go to confession, it seems like a very small action. You confess your sins to the priest, he gives you some advice, and hopefully it's useful, and then you receive absolution. Something that seems so tiny, yet so powerful. You know, uh, one of my good priest friends recommends, when he meets people in all kinds of challenges, that they should go to confession first. You know, clear out all that spiritual junk in your soul, and let Christ redeem you and bring, make you new. People don't notice this, though. They don't notice the, the little seeds 
of Christ's presence in the sacraments, His power, His redemptive power. Well, we need to be convinced that if we have Christ, if we are living for Him, if we are living for the Eucharist, living in the state of grace, then we have the power. We have that grace of communion with the Most Holy Trinity. We have everything. Some time ago I made a pilgrimage to the Philippines. It's literally on the other side of the world from where I am now. And I met some people who were rather poor. And I noticed though that they were happy. They had experienced all kinds of challenges in their life and they had a happiness at life that I was very impressed with. And I knew that the source of their happiness was that little seed. It was like they wanted to make sure that their friends and their relatives guarded that seed of the Kingdom of God. In other words, they were living their baptism. And that gave them a happiness, even though they were facing at the time all kinds of challenges. That's something that really inspired me, that someone can have all kinds of difficulties and yet rejoice. Whereas you go to other places and you can find people who actually have life easy, and yet they're miserable because they don't care about their relationship to God. They have an emptiness within them. They don't think the seed is important, so they're going to all other places to find that fulfillment of life, and they don't have it, and so they're unhappy on the inside. Even when they smile, they can take all kinds of pictures and smile big time, but inside they're broken. Well, we need that seed of Christ's grace within us all the time. We need to accept and understand that if we have Him in our hearts, then we have everything. Jesus is teaching us in these parables that our relationship to Him is most important. And so, brothers and sisters, as we hear Jesus teach us so often about the Kingdom of Heaven, let us live by His teaching and really see that the Kingdom of God is our true home, is the source of our true identity. And when we do this, when we live as faithful citizens of God's Kingdom, then we begin to experience more and more in our own lives the fruitfulness of that grace. That grace which was so tiny for us at, at our own baptism, yet so powerful, infinitely powerful. May we live this identity and value this gift of God's grace in our hearts. In this way, we shall experience the fullness of life, that life that is found only in Christ. And not only that, we can become an instrument to others of leading them to the Lord. So many people can be inspired by your fidelity to Christ. We have no idea when we get to heaven, there could be thousands of people, millions of people who said, because of you, because of your example of faithfulness to our Lord Jesus, I turned away from sin and put my hope in Christ. So your fidelity to Christ can become like those branches of the tree that other people dwell in for safety from evil, for growth in life, and ultimately for their own communion with Almighty God. God bless you.